Yeah. So I'll, I'll keep. I'll, I'll okay. Okay. That's off. I'll okay. Back okay. Back. okay. Uh, all right. So, and presuming they need me to be mic'd up, I'm going to ask: Through all this process, what have you learned about the importance of preschool? Preschool is incredibly important. But let's also put it in perspective. A bunch of years ago, I spoke at the National Governors Association. It was a it was a conference on high school reform, and I said I'd be happy to talk about high school reform. But quick quiz: If we're really going to make a big dent in this and fix K-12, should we focus on A, high school reform; B, middle school reform; C, primary school reform? D, early childhood reform, or E, all of the above? Hint, the answer is E, which one you want, right? They're governors, gotta give them a hint, right? We gotta get out of, of, the, of the trap of thinking we can pull one lever and it's gonna ripple effect through the others no matter how good or bad they are. So, I mean, every study I've seen has shown absolutely the younger we start, you know, you either can spend some money on the front end or spend lots of money for social problems on the back end. So clearly it's a much better bargain early on, which is why we should be doing preschool. At the same time, let's not think we can do preschool really well, ignore fixing K-12, and we're fine. You know, you go to any early childhood, early childhood provider, their biggest nightmare is what happens to their kids when they leave them and go to the K-12 system. So that is one key component among the whole thing. Okay, great. I'm going to go back to the other end of the spectrum on education. Yep. Uh, how do you guys, what does KIPP do to promote access financially to higher education, and to what extent is cost a barrier for a KIPP student's success with higher ed? Yeah, so, uh, certainly being able to afford college and not come out with crazy loans is one of the, of the buckets of barriers our kids face trying to go to and through. You know, we start educating our kids and our families early on in middle school we, we, our KIPP through college team, which follows our kids wherever they go to high school and when they go to college, we support them all the way through. We start working with the kids and parents and building relationships all the way down to middle school. So basically, the college counseling work is not for 12th graders. For us, it's with 6th graders. and goes all the way through. And one big thing in our curriculum we teach our kids and families is about saving and what you do to start to prepare for that and then how you apply for lots of scholarship dollars and how you maximize loans in the financial aid package and we advocate for our, our kids to get great financial aid packages in college, and we do the whole nine yards, because that is a big barrier. Let me follow up on that a little bit, because you said that there's a team. Is it, uh, is it teachers being tasked with this, or is it a special yeah. set of folks who do this it's work? A, it's a, beyond the, the, the teachers working with the kids in grade levels, we have another group of teachers, which are basically college counselors, yeah. part of our KIPP through college team. But unlike, you know, in a typical school system, there are no college counselors in primary schools or middle schools, and in high school they show up, if they show up, senior year of high school. For us, our college counselors are working with our kids starting basically sixth grade. And all the way through the years of middle school and all the years of high school, we're working with them, starting to educate them, so when they get to 12th grade, they and their parents are very well prepared for the whole application process, the whole financial aid package process. Okay. I think you may have addressed this in some of the talk, but let me ask it anyway. How do you handle situations where kids are just plain underperforming in KIPP? There's a, a couple of problem students. What's the scenario? Yeah. How do you manage that? Uh, the same way any great teacher or, or principal does, which is you got to find a way to reach and teach every child, and not every kid responds the same ways. Now, we are a public school, so we do have zero tolerance with due process for very heinous things. If a kid's going to bring a gun to school or try to bring drugs to school, then there's a process for expulsion to happen. But because we're part of the public school system, our, the way we, we expel a child is the same way as a traditional public school. Mm -hmm. And that's for very, very rare extreme instances. For other kids that are just misbehaving in class or doing their homework, you know, it's, it's one of our kipisms is be the constant, not the variable. Mm -hmm. It's up for the adults in the schools to figure out how to reach and teach every kid. And not every kid responds to the, the same group of incentives or consequences so you got to customize it for some kids to reach them. Okay, this one uh, tries to hit at some of the same uh, areas here. Since results are your measure of success, what do you know about the incarceration rates in KIPP neighborhoods? And can you identify yeah, that? Yeah, th this is a, a terrific question about incarceration rates we have not studied yet. KIPP is about the, is one of the school systems that's been pricked and pride in research more than just about anyone else. But one question we've not asked yet is, have we had an impact on the juvenile justice system? and the adult criminal justice system years later. Anecdotally, I can tell you that very, very, very few of our kids enter into the, the criminal justice system, which is, we're very proud of that. But we have not researched that to, to see is that different than the traditional 
system? I, just by looking at the numbers, I assume the answer is yes. We haven't researched it yet, and I'm, I'm dying to look at that because that's a big social return on investment. Beyond, if, if kids can go to and through college, beyond the income that they're able to provide for themselves and their families, it's a societal savings on the back end as well. Let me see that this is probably not fair to ask this, but what is the one change that makes the most impact on low-income families? Having uh, the, the school leadership and faculty believe that there's no reason why every one of their kids in a low-income community cannot succeed in school and life as well as kids from upper-income communities. Okay, you, you have to expect that in Idaho you get this question. Um, <laughs> What do you know about Idaho education and do you have any recommendations? What's the one thing we should be doing here? Uh, I, I don't know a whole lot specifically about Idaho education, but uh, after being in most states in the United States, what I do know is that the challenges that Idaho faces are not that different from California, Colorado, Massachusetts, Missouri, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, should I keep going? <laughs> right? That it's, it's, it, this is not easy work. At the end of the day, what Idaho needs is what the other 49 states need, which is what the world needs, which is great teaching and more of it. Right? And, that, and the critical path is great leadership, and that's at the policy level. What should we be doing to encourage, and except for success, leadership to allow great teaching more of it to flourish in all of our schools? You mentioned a couple of examples in your talk, but let me ask you, uh, where is the one place and scenario that you've opened a KIPP school that you would never have expected in the 20 years you've been doing this? What unexpected place have you been? To start a school? Yeah. Probably a place like Gas, North Carolina, population 900, just south of the Virginia border. Where they got, you know, we are right outside downtown Gaston. I, I assume it's downtown because that's where the one traffic light is in town. Um, you know, that we were not looking. There's no strategic reason to start a school in Gaston other than that's where Caleb Dolan and Tammy Sutton were two amazing Teach America alumni that I try to convince move down the road to Atlanta, right? But they want to stay in gas until we started school in the peanut field. Um, and that it's, it's one of the top performing schools in the state of North Carolina now. All right. Uh, and, and again, uh, I think you may have answered this one, uh, but let me ask you again, what is the core purpose and belief that keeps KIPP together? What is the one thing that you guys, that nets you guys together? I think our, our core belief is a couple things. One, it's that all children will learn. Not all children can learn, which is, the, which is the fluffy statement that's in a lot of schools. Change can to will, because then that puts the onus on the adults to do something about it. All children will learn. And the other thing we, we believe in our heart of hearts is that promises to children are sacred. No one had to come to KIPP. Everyone chose to come to KIPP because we sat in the living room and promised that we would do whatever it took to help them get to and through college. So we, we're on the hook for all of our kids, not just to have a great school year, but to have a great next 10 to 20 years and be set for success to have a great life. And we have to deliver on those very sacred promises we made to children. Last question. You've now, you're looking back at 20 years of KIPP. What do you think KIPP will look like in 20 years from now? What do you, any predictions? Well, I've already lost all my hair, so I'm not sure what <laughs> else is going to fall off, which I'm a little worried about. Um, you know, in, I hope in, in 20 years we're going to keep growing. And like I said, we will get to the point where, where we are doing a great job and we don't have a wait list. Because that by definition, that means we found this tipping point where we're doing a great job with our kids, and we've helped push the public school system to do a great job with their kids, and all the kids and parents are happy being served in the school they're at.